Hello and welcome to Visa Port Education Videos by Ahsan Ahmed. We are doing O Levels Physics 5054 and with me today our topic is topic number 8 which is Energy Resources and Transfer of Energy Part 1. These are the learning outcomes given by CIE under the topic of energy. In total there are 13 learning outcomes. In this slide you are looking at the first 6. The rest of the seven of the learning outcomes are here from G to M. This is a huge topic. So in, in these videos, you will be only uh, finding out my lessons about the conceptual part, uh, not the theoretical part. For theoretical part, maybe you will be looking at some, uh, just the slides, uh, not my explanation or audio at all. Uh, but yes, obviously the three or four parts of this energy lessons will be based upon the, the conceptual um, learning outcomes. So in this lesson, uh, the learning objectives will be looking at A, C and B and this order is done on purpose. So the first one is A. Let's have a look what it is all about. Before we list the different forms of energy with examples in which each form occurs, let's have a look what energy is. So in, in very basic understanding, we can say that to do any work, we need energy. Even when I'm recording this video, I need energy to do so. Any work you do in your day-to-day -day routine or daily life, uh, you need energy for that. And the SI unit of energy is joules. Remember, this unit is very important, represented by capital J, and we'll be using this a lot in our calculations, which will come in later on. Let's have a look into the forms of energy. Here are some popular forms which we are very familiar with, so I do not have any uh, diagram or uh, picture description for it. Uh, you are familiar with these. Anything which is kind of um, uh, something which need explanation, I'll, I'll, I'll do so. So electrical is something we use appliances at our home. Uh, so this is the major energy we use every day. And to be very honest with you, most of energy resources are used to transform into uh, complete our requirement for electrical energy and, and so. The kinetic and gravitational potential energy is highlighted in green. The reason is because we will discuss them in detail in this is this lesson particularly. Uh, what is elastic potential energy? So anything which has elasticity uh, that it can store the elastic potential energy. So here you can see the spring um, and the mass is attached to it. So if we compress it or stretch it, in both cases the the spring will store some some energy in it and that energy can be used to do some work hence it is used as or it is known as elastic potential energy and we know that the spring has the elasticity in it uh, the elastic potential energy concept can be used in trampoline in in the rubber band uh, in so many different things in the bouncing of the ball the tennis ball so anything which bounces back anything which can be stretched and can be compressed uh, which is elastic in nature, uses this form of energy. Then we have sound. I'm recording this video using sound energy. We are very much familiar to it. Um, thermal heat, again, something we use in our daily lives. Solar energy. These days, it is very much encouraged to use solar energy. Initial installments are a bit expensive, but then eventually it cut the cost down in, in a very big manner and it's very helpful for the environment as well. Uh, we will see them in detail in the theoretical part where we'll discuss about uh, the renewable and non-renewable sources of energy and then we have wind using windmills again for the electrical resource and the nuclear power plants using nuclear energy uh, to again generate the electricity and um, fulfill our requirements for the electrical appliances and there are so many but here I, I decided to use or show you some uh, some popular ones which we are familiar with now here we will look at the second learning outcome which is about the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy so first of all kinetic energy so anything which is moving and when it is moving it has some average velocity let me select my pointer so then I can explain you in a better way. So here, whenever a body is an object which has a mass, it is moving. And when it is moving, it has velocity, it has speed. 
So when it has velocity or speed, it will gain kinetic energy. And that is why the formula is based upon these two things. And both of these things, mass and velocity, are directly proportional to kinetic energy. That means if they are high, the value of the kinetic energy of the animation body will be here to understand the concept. So this tic tac ball uh, toy uh, is is a very good explanation of kinetic energy. So here it is it is it is moving in a loop. It is this video or this GIF is playing in loop. But what is happening here is that this boy is using his chemical energy converted in, into mechanical energy through his wrist and then that energy if we say the first ball is a red one uh, transferring into the red ball and the red a uh, white ball the white ball starts moving it gains the velocity and when it gains the velocity this one here when it gains the velocity it it gains kinetic energy and that is what it transfers into the red ball, the second ball. And the whole thing carries on again and again and again and again. Uh, because this is happening in the real world where we have the gravitation pull, where we have the air resistance, atmospheric pressure. So obviously the guy has to do it over and over again to repeat the process. But imagine if this same experiment was happening in the space, this rotation will carry on forever. Yes, the infinite loop will occur uh, just because uh, this kinetic energy will carry on itself. Let's have a look about gravitational potential energy. So the gravitational potential energy is a form of energy which a body store. I, I usually explain the word potential that it means the tendency, uh, the capability uh, which a body has. So when a body is not moving, it doesn't seem that it might have energy. But at the same time, that body stores energy, which is ready to roll into anything if the body has three things. One is mass. Second thing is the gravity, which is pulled from the Earth here if we are living on planet Earth. And the third thing is height it has achieved. So that is why the formula of potential energy is MGH, mass, gravity, and height. And again, all these three factors are directly proportional. What does that mean? Now, on Earth, every object will have same mass. And the gravitational pull will be constant throughout the world. But what factor might change is the height. So let's have a good example to understand how the height can play a role in, in, in different values of gravitational potential energy. So here we have three floor building where we have ground first and second floor and if we keep one ball which is red one here on the first floor balcony uh, its height is h1 and the second ball the blue one we keep on the second floor balcony where the height is h2 anyone can tell that the blue ball has the higher position or it has the greater height since it has the greater height and height is directly proportional to the kind of, uh, the potential energy so the blue ball will have the greater potential energy due to its higher position due to the value of due to the greater value of the height as compared to the red ball and this concept the height concept will be used a lot in the in the later part so so remember this this is very important that the height can change the value of gravitational potential energy. Now let's move to the third part, which is which is the key. Why we understood the first two things is to understand the law of conservation of energy or the principle of conservation of energy. So let's say it states that the energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. That we cannot produce energy on our own. There has to be something like if you are if you are making a chair, you need wood. You need wood to 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 produce that wood. You need to plant a seed, and if you need that seed, that seed has to come from a plant in the beginning. So you need something to make something. Um, that is the human's limitation. That is where we 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 are limited. So in the same way, we cannot generate energy without anything. We need something to generate another form of energy. And in the same way, we cannot destroy it. We cannot vanish the energy 
uh, into the into the obsolete realm we cannot finish it all so that is what it means by we cannot create um, sorry uh, this this line so yes we cannot create or we cannot destroy the energy but it can be only transformed it can be only converted from one form to the other let's let's have a look what does this mean so here we have uh, the blue ball on the second floor balcony what happens at this moment it has the gravitational potential energy due to this mass gravity and height but what happens if it falls down so as soon as it will touch the ground you will hear the sound so that is the sound energy plus heat now a lot of students will say that where will be the heat we cannot feel it or we cannot experience it well it is not necessary that whatever you experience is there there are a lot of things which are there but we cannot sense them the same way works here so the heat will be felt by these two objects which are in contact so the ground and the ball and that's how the explosion works so so when explosion occurs you hear the sound that is the sound energy uh, but it, you also get the feeling of heat energy and that's where it, it creates the disaster and destroys whatever is is nearby it whatever is surrounding in the surrounding now let's understand law of conservation of energy in in more technical way so here we have the potential energy formula remember mgh mass gravity height and the second one is kinetic energy formula with, where we have mass and velocity now imagine here we have a ball at some height now this is the maximum height the ball can achieve at this building this is the maximum height it can achieve since this is the maximum height and the ball is not moving at all so here the potential energy will be maximum because we have the maximum value of height and kinetic energy will be zero can anybody guess why is that simply because the ball is not moving and when the ball is not moving it is static it has no velocity so the velocity is zero now if you put the values of mass and velocity in the formula and the velocity is zero so whatever the mass of the object is you will get zero value for the kinetic energy so that's why here the kinetic energy value is zero now let's see what happens when the ball falls down so now if the ball falls down and we stop the ball right here at at this instant at this point and let's see what is happening here so here one form of energy is getting converted into the other so here our kinetic energy is increasing and your guess is obviously right is because when it is falling down its velocity is increasing so when its velocity value is increasing every second its kinetic energy is increasing now where does that kinetic energy is coming from it's coming from the potential energy now the potential energy is decreasing and the answer is because its height is decreasing can you see over here I'm just gonna highlight here the height factor has decreased if you compare these two height values so the height value has decreased a lot like up to almost up to this much if I draw a straight line almost up to this much value of height has been decreased now since that height is decreased uh, the potential energy value is decreased it's not maximum anymore so where does that go that has converted into the kinetic energy and what happens when this ball keeps on going down and reaches this point now remember this point is not when it is hitting the ground I have just if you look carefully there is still some space between the ground and the ball so the ball hasn't hit the ground yet it's not struck the ground yet so here we will not consider as the sound or heat but actually here what will happen you will get the maximum kinetic energy because this is the point just before the ball hitting the ground it will achieve the maximum possible velocity so the maximum possible kinetic energy now when it achieves the maximum potential uh, sorry maximum kinetic energy since its height is almost equivalent to zero 
there is no height whatsoever so its potential energy will also be zero so that means whatever its potential energy was in the beginning here whatever the value was here so imagine if it was 100 joules here at this point all that 100 joules is converted into the kinetic energy and the the zero value is being swapped so that is what law of conservation of energy is and when we have seen that what happens when this ball when this ball over here will hit the ground so once this ball will hit the ground uh, you will see that this even this kinetic energy will be converted into sound and heat and this this whole process will carry on so that is what we mean by law of conservation of energy good way to understand the law of conservation of energy is by using the example of pendulum now here if you if you look at this pendulum what is happening here uh, when the pendulum reaches the high point like like this point over here this is the maximum height it is achieving and when it it, it reaches here you 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 can see that you can observe that that at this point it stops for maybe nano or picosecond just maybe the thousand one thousand part of the second it stops there and then it starts moving again so when it stops there it it achieves the maximum possible height the same thing happens there and the same thing exactly happens here as well so when it reaches at this point this point it it achieves the maximum height this this height value so that's why its potential energy is maximum here but when it starts coming down so every point where it comes down like here the height value decreases more and then here the height values decreases more and if you if you follow this trajectory so here the the height value is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and eventually you will see that this 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 point will reach over here where its height will be zero that is why its potential energy at this point because there's no height will be zero but at the same time here it's kinetic energy will be maximum and the reason is because here its speed will be maximum its velocity will be maximum and uh, that is what is happening at at every oscillation so it starts from here i repeat again with maximum potential energy as it goes down as it moves down its potential energy decreases and its kinetic energy increases and this this process carries on till it reaches at this point and here its potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is maximum and after this it starts achieving um, the height again so here its potential energy is now increasing again and kinetic energy is decreasing and this process carries on till it reaches at this this height again so that is how the law of conservation of energy in with the help of pendulum works i hope you understood the concept this was a long video uh, because um, it, it needed a little bit more explanation and i have used these five images or animations all of them are from commons.wikimedia.org and do subscribe to my channel and i hope you will enjoy learning our videos. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye.